this part of the tutorial is going to go quite fast because I only have a 15 minute recording window from now until it stops. And I'm pretty advanced with using tables and words. So if you see me do something that you don't understand how I got that done, feel free to leave a question in the comment section below and I will answer it as well as I can. So this is what the labels look like once they're completely done. This black line is just a cut guideline so I know where to cut once it's printed because these gray dashed lines will not print on your final sheet. So we're going to create a new document. We need to go up to layout, change the margins and orientation. This is a custom label so we're going to do custom margins. We only need a quarter of an inch each side and we need to change the orientation to landscape. Hit OK. And now we need to insert our table. Based on the information from the first screen, we need a five by seven table. Five columns across, seven rows down. We're going to right click in this top right box, go down to table properties. Go to the rows, we need to specify each row height based on the measurements that we have. So the top row is three quarters of an inch, and we always want to check exactly and always uncheck allow row to break across pages. You don't want your rows breaking across pages when you're designing. You hit next row and Word will automatically make that change for you. So this row is the row where all of our print will be found and it is the width of your bar. In this example it's two and a quarter inches exactly and I will leave the dimensions of my soap bar in the description box below so you can um, understand why I'm doing this way. And uncheck allow, go to the next row. This row is the bottom panel of the top label where we fold and affix our adhesive. We need only three quarters of an inch, 0.75 inches exactly. And uncheck allow, we're going to go to the next row. This is the cut line row. We don't need to do anything to that go to the next row and we're starting our label all over again this is the second label so 0.75 inches exactly uncheck next row is the label portion of the label where all of your information will go the width of your soap bar exactly and uncheck and the final row is the bottom panel where you fold and affix your adhesive on this bottom label. So that again is only three quarters of an inch or 0.75 inches exactly. Uncheck allow, click next row, and then we're going to hit OK. You're going to click once in the top left box to deselect the entire table. And now we're going to right click once more to reopen the table properties tab. I found it easier to just close it and reopen it because it caused some crazy stuff when you try to do it all at one time. We're going to go to the column tab. Now this is based on the measurements we did across with the ruler across the front of the soap wrapper. So this first panel is one and a quarter inches. That was the panel that had nothing printed on it. It was just there to hold the adhesive for the back panel. Next column is the width of your soap bar, the thickness that you cut your soap bar. My soap bars are cut one inch thick. If you cut yours one and a quarter inches, that's 1.25. The next column is the front panel where your logo, soap fragrance name, and uh, weight will be. And in this example, it was three and three quarters or 3.75 inches wide. The very next panel, which was side two, is whatever information you want. Again, it's the thickness that you cut your bar. So mine are cut one inch thick. And the final column is the back panel of your soap wrapper or soap label with your ingredients and company name or whatever information you're going to put there. In this example, it is three and a quarter or 3.25 inches wide. And then we hit next column just to make me feel safe and hit OK. So now we're going to remove these black lines because we don't want them to show when we print, when you print your labels. So you're going to highlight those by click and hold, drag from top left to bottom right box, and that will highlight the entire table. And then you're just going to right click 
and you can go to table properties. If you have this borders option up here, you can use that. But if not, you're just going to right click table properties, go to the table tab, borders and shading, hit none. Make sure that it's applied to the entire table and not just the cell. OK, OK again. So that removes those lines, those visible lines that will, would have printed. And that just leaves us with the guidelines that we need to see to put our information. So now we're going to just put a line here so that we'll know where to cut. Go to insert and you can do shapes. You can do a rectangle, a line or whatever. I like to do a little a rectangle because it's a little meatier than just a regular line. And I make it black because who wants to waste colorful ink? Then we can start setting up our text boxes. Now this part seems labor intensive and a bit cumbersome, and um, but it will save you a lot of time in the long run if you go ahead and take the time to set that up. Because by using text boxes, you're going to avoid having to redesign a an, an entirely new label for every time you make a change. Believe me, I used to do that, and it's a nightmare. So we're going to go to Insert Text Box. I always draw my own text boxes because I can place them exactly where I want them to go. And when you're drawing text boxes, you don't want to fill the entire space because you have to remember we're folding on these lines and you don't want your words to get cut off. So for my example, I'm just going to put the name of my fragrance. Go up here. I need to change the text direction. I need to remember this is side one. It needs to be facing to the left. So we face it, click that, and it changes automatically. You can highlight that. Type in whatever font or typeface you want to use, the size you want to use. I think I'm going to go with 16 point for this example. Um, and then we're going to bring this down just a bit so it's kind of centered. And oh, and we need to always check this to make sure that it is in front of the text and fixed position on the page. And then we need to go over here and click the shape options. Oh wait, that panel isn't open when you first start. So you're going to click on the box, right click, format shape, then that pops open. So when you see it, it normally opens looking like this. Just hit down um, the line arrow and then click no line. We're going to leave this panel open while we're designing because it'll make our workflow go a little faster. And also for a faster workflow, it helps to have a document open that already has all your information. So all you have to do is copy and paste into your text boxes instead of having to build and type. So we're going to go back over here to our document. I'm done with that panel. Now I need to move to the main, the front panel, and I need to create a text box. So I'm going to draw a text box. I'm going to draw this text box out right here, and I'm going to go to my document that has the information. I know I want my company name and what I do, so I'm just going to highlight that, control C to copy, and then we're going to come back to our working document, control V to paste, and highlight that, change the or, um, alignment to centered, and that part is done. So that part is not done. Now we make sure it's in front of the text and a fixed position on the page. And then shape options, no line. We always want to remove that line around the text box. You don't want extra boxes cluttering your design. So the easiest way to do this next part is just to copy and paste your text boxes so you're not dragging out a whole bunch of text boxes all over your design. So you just click to highlight to make sure that the bounding box is showing around the text box. Control C to copy, or you can right click and then hit copy. Click outside of the box to deselect, but make sure you're in the panel where you want the box to go. Control V to paste, and then you just drag it where you want it to go. Now it does have the same exact information. That is an easy fix. You just highlight it and backspace to delete it or just hit the delete key. And then we're going to go to our other document. What needs to go there? We need the name of our product or the fragrance that we're putting on this label. Highlight it, copy it. Did I copy that? Yes, I did. Great. So we're going to change the font size to one that we think looks good. Again, remember to make sure that it's in front of text, fixed position, and it doesn't have a line. That's great. So we can 
center justify it and then we're going to drag this box over to kind of center it underneath that all right so again we can do the same thing Control c to copy and then we're going to click outside of it Control c to paste oops i did that wrong there we go so Control c to copy Control b to paste we're going to drag this down and then remove that information we're going to go to our document that has our information now we just need to put the weight and we're going to come back over and paste it in here and that needs to be myriad because that goes with the other information that we have showing you want to have consistent fonts you don't want to have three or four different fonts on your page i used to do it and i didn't realize how unprofessional it can look um, in the world of professional design as it as it were so that needs to be bigger according to the rules um, but for sake of demonstration we're going to stop here all right so the only other thing we need on this panel is our logo so you just go up to insert pictures and then a uh, dialog box you find wherever you have it saved and then you're going to right click wrap text in front of text and then you just resize your logo bring it down you want everything to kind of line up if you can get it to line up you want it to look like there's kind of like an invisible grid that's actually what we learned is grid systems in design and forgive me if I'm talking fast I'm trying to condense three years of graphic design into a 15 minute um, recording so this information needs to go down just a little bit and but again you want to make sure I know it looks like a lot of empty space on there but you have to remember you're going to be folding this paper and you want to have enough clearance so that you can fold and still have space so that your design doesn't look crowded um, so we're not going to put anything here I was going to but I'm about to run out of time so we're going to go ahead and copy let's see this one because it's already myriad so we're going to click this corner of the box you don't want to click in here because that just copies the words you want to click the bounding box and then control C to copy click in the panel where you want it to show up control V and I'm just going to drag this out and move it just a little bit and highlight that remove that information and now we're going to go back over here and copy that information and go back to our working document paste it so all we have to do now is just change it to our myriad so we have the same font working eight point that's good everything shows up so that is the first label done so now that we've done all that work the easiest part once you get templates done and down all you have to do is highlight you don't want to highlight let me deselect that you don't want to highlight until that black bar shows up on the outside over here because that will mess up your design when you go to paste it down here so you want to click hold and drag out and then stop and then you're going to hit Control c click once in this first box of this main panel Control v and there's all your information and then that's done and it's ready to print and then when you print it out you just cut on either side of this black line and you have two labels designed and so when you're ready to change information you just click on that box and save it as you know luscious spring or whatever the name is going to be and that way you don't have to create an entirely different template every time but this only works if your soap bars are the same size um, throughout your batches so Again, I hope I didn't, I, I wasn't too long winded, but again, it's three years worth of graphic design school compressed into a very short video. Thank you for watching and happy soaping.